Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of The Method Behind the Madness, where I'll be breaking down how we one-shot Razorback. Wait, what? Oh, this this isn't the Razorback video? This is... Oh, this is for Boss 2? Oh, sh... <laughs> Alright, all jokes aside, welcome back to the third installment to The Method Behind the Madness series. Today, I'll be covering the method we used to complete the second encounter in the Dark Hours Raid. This strategy is essentially a more complex version of the strategy we used to one-shot Buddy and Lucy, so if you have yet to check out that video, I'll leave a link in the description so you can go check it out. With that said, I'm going to let the clip run, and then after, I'll jump straight into the breakdown of The Method Behind the Madness. A lot of data to college mm -hmm. beer. This is gonna take a few no minutes. way is it a college beer. Shh. Front, go. Hostile radio intercepted. Ads coming. Make sure sniper's Ads dead. Coming. With that done, let's get straight into the breakdown. For this encounter, you'll be breaking down into three teams. Team Dizzy on A side, which consists of two Regulus players. Team Ricochet on B side, which consists of one Regulus player and Team Weasel on B-side as well, which consists of three Regulus players, one Sniper, and one Buff player. Now, let's take a look at the room layout to help visualize this a little better. To begin, let's start with the less confusing side, A. A-side consists of Team Dizzy, where two players are responsible for quickly dispatching of this boss to help progress the fight. One in which presses the console, and the other applying an Achilles Pulse to the boss. On the B-side, things get a little more messy, however. On this side, you have the remaining six players. To start, you have the buff player who overcharges and presses the console to begin the fight. The five remaining players all begin to pre-damage Ricochet, leaving him very injured right before Weasel spawns. Now, once Weasel does spawn, four out of the five DPS players shift their full focus onto Weasel, saving their regular shots and a sniper shot for him. The fifth DPS player who does not shift to Weasel is responsible for dispatching Ricochet after Weasel is spawned. With all the positions and roles laid out, let's jump into what each position does in depth, as B-side can be a little confusing on who shoots who. Oh, and for every role that I refer to as a Regulus player, they'll be running the build shown here, specking everything into headshot damage, and the dedicated Ricochet player, the Sniper player, and Buff player are the only roles that have different builds from what is shown here and will be highlighted later on. So, like we did with the room layout, we will start with A-side. Both of these players are running the standard Regulus build shown previously. The console player is responsible for hitting the console to begin the fight, as well as landing a shot on Dizzy when he lands. The second player on A-side is responsible for Achilles pulsing Dizzy and landing a shot on him, with both players promptly clearing adds once Dizzy has been dealt with. On B, things get a little interesting. The buff player runs the build shown here, providing future initiative buff, overcharge, and opportunistic for the team. The roles do not matter as long as you can provide a 6 tier overcharge, with the skills being used as a hive for the overcharge, and the second skill is being unused. As you can see here, this player is on a console and provides overcharge almost immediately, breaking his hive as he interacts with the console. He then applies opportunistic to both Ricochet and Weasel. Keep in mind here, this player only shoots one time in order to proc opportunistic, in order to prevent the loss of an Achilles mark on the bosses. The dedicated Ricochet player runs the build shown here having essentially the same build as the Regulus players, but providing overwatch for the team, as he does not need as much damage as the other roles. This player is responsible for finishing off Ricochet after Weasel has spawned. This player must wait to kill Ricochet, as you want Weasel to spawn on the B side, as that side has the orange gas, allowing you to essentially never need to switch gases during the whole encounter. The four remaining players are tasked with weakening Ricochet until Weasel spawns, and then promptly switching focus to Weasel using their charged regular shots on him. Keep in mind, one out of the four players will be running a sniper headshot build to maximize the damage output, and one of the regular players should also Achilles Pulse Ricochet as soon as he spawns. The sniper player will be running the build shown here, specking all in the headshot damage and using the Achilles Pulse to pulse Weasel when he spawns. As you can see, this player takes one shot at Ricochet and then waits to pulse Weasel immediately. After doing so, he takes the marked location on the head. Now, it is important to remember the reason why the sniper takes the headshot, and that is because of the way Dodge City interacts with the Achilles Pulse. 
the Sniper Headshot build can actually do more damage as shown in the Buddy and Lucy video than a Regulus can to the head, because Regulus only stacks twice with the Achilles Pulse and the Dodge City Holster. So keep in mind that the Sniper should be taking the headshot. Now, the other three players should be running the Regulus build shown before, and each choose an Achilles Mark to take. Assigning the Achilles mark is very important here as each player needs to take a separate mark. This diagram and location labeling should help your team assign some marks, so feel free to use these. Now, it is important to remember that the sniper will be taking the head and the three Rios players will need to choose out of the remaining marks, as you'll be only using four out of the six marks after all. This method is definitely much more difficult to execute as the targets will be on the move, and everyone needs to land their shots, so keep that in mind. Now, after all three bosses have been eliminated, each player should promptly begin ad clear, and that should pretty much wrap up the fight. With that said, I have now covered three out of the four bosses on Dark Hours, with Razorback being the final episode of this series covering Dark Hours. If you've enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe for future content, as well as to keep you notified for when I finally release how we one-shot Razorback. Front open. Front. Pulsed. Ready. Go. Yes! Oh, 745! Spirit, <laughs> <laughs>